John Darwin, we're back again. I have to make a, an apology for my red bloodshot eye, John. I know it looks yeah. really weird. I, I'm, I was concerned for you. I thought maybe you went 10 rounds with somebody before you got here. No, <laughs> you know what? You can get it from, if you get hit in the eye with a tennis ball or a boxing mm -hmm. accent, but there was no reason for it. You know what? I honestly think I did. I think I hit myself in the face with a mosquito <laughs> when I was sleeping. And mm -hmm. I had it for two days before I even noticed and it's just spread now, but it's starting to go back. And I did. Thank you very much for all these messages I've been getting from people. I went to a doctor and she said the same thing I did. And it cost me $180 for her to just confirm that there's nothing wrong. It just looks unsightly. So my apologies, folks. But John, welcome back to another show. Um, been another four weeks. And I, I think I need to just mark something as significant. It's summer solstice today, June 21st. Mm -hmm. And there is a huge full moon just coming up over here. It's uh, nearly 11 o'clock at night for me in Spain. But watch out in the skies tonight because I'm pretty sure you're going to see a huge full moon. And it's a very, very powerful evening, John. So I would encourage you to spread as much information that you have. Don't hold back because I know you've been gagging. We've been, this is, um, we've been trying to get this interview done for a few days. I know you've got so much stuff. So I'm going to hand the mic over to you, buddy, and off we go. Let's see where you, what you want to share this week. Well, thanks for having me again, as always, mate. I always look forward to this with you each month. Uh, happy belated Father's Day to you, by the way. I know you got. Thank you very time. much. I didn't even get a message. I don't think ours is the same month because I didn't get yeah. a message from my son. So anyway, he's too old for that now. Anyway, a buddy of mine lives in Potsdam near Berlin. He tells me that, and over there, Father's Day is in uh, May, actually. Yeah, I think so. Because, you know, being from a different nationality, but then living in a different country, I actually don't even celebrate it or acknowledge it, really. I'm lucky if I get it. But anyway, I appreciate that, John. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, we Americans, we, we're so concerned. You love a holiday. <laughs> we think everybody celebrates the same thing we do. <laughs> yeah. But, go on, uh, then. Where are we, we going to go first? Because there's been oh, a lot of stuff okay. going on. Yeah, there's a lot to go through. So um, before we get into Iraq and the usual fare that is important, don't get me wrong, I, there's some really important things that I think will give encouragement to both my audience and your audience, respectively. So uh, a good teammate of mine, uh, or of ours, I should say, excuse me, John G, uh, came up with this about a week and a half ago. We dropped it on our Telegram. So those who are on our Telegram, this is old hat for them. But again, for the consensus, they will find this very encouraging. Um, a lot of concern uh, made about uh, the national debt. Uh, the normies don't know what's going on. I'm paying taxes. Uh, I'm under upside down on my mortgage. You know, uh, uh, you know, I lost my job. You know, understandable situations where everybody is. You can feel the tension. I think I would imagine over there, same as here in America, it's wound tighter than a rubber band. And and everybody, it's, we're at an untenable point where something's got to give. I think everybody would agree on the whole on that. Yeah, um, but I thought I thought this would offer some encouragement uh, to our audiences. So I pulled this video up from John, and I'm going to share it with you now. So let me share the screen. Let me know when you see this. Yeah, we got it. National debt has been paid. Okay, so this came from somebody on TikTok, and she did some pretty copious research. I turned up the volume as best I can, so I pray everybody can hear it. But okay. I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll this for you, David. It's about a minute. It's about two minutes. And then I would like your reaction on it as well. Okay. So yeah. here we go. Different type of native, a native thing about how time goes in peace. This keep track of his not his place I want to see. This is a file copy, so it has a line through it. But this is a this is where the banks have transferred. Twenty one trillion dollars. Twenty one trillion dollars, which is what our debt ceiling was at at twenty seventeen. So our debts have been paid off. What you see on the news is a lie. We do not have a debt. We are not $32,000, dollars in debt. We are not in debt. We are out of debt because of President Trump. And he is in the process of tearing down and dismantling the corporation and uh, the Federal Reserve. So all this coming down, <clears throat> you will pay no more taxes. We will get money coming back to us. You'll get a good amount coming back to you when this all happens and all the... Uh, Everything in the bank, it all has been uh, reset. Financial reset has done. The United States of America, Department of, of State, you know, but these are all papers that tells, you know, comes along with it when they transfer the money. But there are also, um, there are also, you can see here John Kerry signed this. There are 
also famous for here where they, they gave up. Each state, uh, $333 trillion, they put a lien on each state. That's, so they can't spend money unnecessarily like they're not supposed to. So tell me this man is not smart. Our president is the smartest man there is. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is this is your proof that our um, debt has been paid off. We do not have any debt. Don't listen to the news, period. Um, we don't have any debt. And we're dismantling the system. So it's coming together so that we can see Masara Jasara come to pass. If you don't know what that is, I'll explain it later. I'll try to get on uh, later tonight and do a live. I don't know when. I've got a little bit left here to do for my mom. And um, then I've got to uh, do some more canvassing for, for Trump. And then I'll do a live. But I'll see you later on this afternoon, okay? Y'all have a good day. Oh, that's super good. So how much was it? $21 trillion. So in March of 2017, as you can see, Trump and the team uh, paid off the $21 trillion with a surplus that we already had. So when he said in his inaugural address, I started thinking about, you know, chess, this is all puzzle pieces, as you know by now. Uh, do you remember when he did his inaugural address? He said, today, we are transferring the power back from the, the, cor the corporation back to you, the people. And he had the yeah. military standing behind him, all in garb to represent that he represents the military, right? His commander in chief and is the president of the corporation. Then he's now the president of the Republic. So he stepped out. People think he's not there. When's he coming back? He never left. We have to keep repeating this because people are at different learning curves of, of understanding. So this is a very powerful thing. This is proof that the debt is artificial and they're carrying this narrative out, but they've really done a bait and switch to pay off said debt through Nassar Jassara with all the gold and all that, that you know, we repatriated back from the Vatican, back from Parliament, here into the U.S., away from D.C. You see yeah. Trump wisely during Blovid, as I call it, COVID, uh, uh, during 2020, he took it a step further and empowered the states to run themselves individually, independently from the union, which is the constitutional edict of things. So before you comment, let me segue it with another point to prove my point. So, um, You've heard him talking about uh, removing taxes on tips, removing the federal income tax, abolishing it, and many other things. Many yeah. other things, meaning additionally property tax. We'll talk about that in a second. Let me show you a document that I personally have. I redacted my information so that people can see this. Extremely powerful. Here's the next one. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me know when you see it. So this is my personal document for, that, that I did. So... A couple of years ago, I had a business partner I was working with, didn't hold his end of the bargain, so we dissolved the business. They then uh, tried after Blobid to come after me for said taxes. I told them in red ink, which is the blood of the living man, woman, right, biblically, that I do not consent as I have no contract with them, that they have to prove I have a contract. And I used commercial code because the old government in DC is the corporation, they're a business. What do corporations do? They work on commercial code, UCC. And the code is 1 308. Everything is language and codes, David, here in America. And I would imagine throughout the whole world in different capacities. And I said, if you can prove I have a contract with you, I will gladly pay taxes. But I see no law where individuals have to pay, even though it was a business, it was still basically a single person operation. And so um, I wrote this letter two and a half years ago. They just got back to me, as you can see, last week, June 12th. Right now, what I'm what I want you to pay attention to is the top here where my mouse is. You'll see at the top of the letter, David, it's highlighted Department of the Treasury in bold. You see that? Yeah. Underneath it says Internal Revenue Service. It doesn't say IRS. Why? Because IRS is part of the corporation. Internal Revenue Service is part of the Constitution. And then if you look at the top here, I'll I'll zoom up a little bit as much as I much as I can. It says Treasury, right? Internal Revenue Service. It says nothing about Federal Reserve. And I asked the attorney down here below, Paul, Mc Paul Michael Fabian, with his number, you can see it. I'm not hiding anything. Um, I said, why did it take you guys so long to write the letter back? He said, we've been restructured from the inside out. And we're changing. I said, oh, you're now going from a collections agency to a credit agency. He said, I cannot confirm or deny that. I said, understood. So this, I'm leaving it up for a second so people can process this. You can see this. This is my own personal letter. You can see they've exonerated me. They say, uh, we're filing the decision which shows zero deficiency 
zero income tax, zero penalty. If I don't owe any income tax, how can I pay a penalty? So they go hand in hand. But this is proof. What I want to show people is that the system has changed internally from the Federal Reserve to the Treasury, and the IRS is being dissolved into the corporation as a credit system to pay money back to the people. And their own stamp says nothing about the Federal Reserve. It says only the Treasury. That, to me, if you can read between the lines, is a hugely powerful statement. How much was the debt, John? And John, how much? $10,000. They... $10, so that you two years ago, you said, I don't have a contract. We either wrote it in red that I'll be happy to pay this if you send me back a contract with my uh, sink, yeah. wet sink. Did you give them a date before they could send it back to you? Yes. According to Uniform Form Commercial Code, they have 10 business days from the time that you send the letter that they receive it. So if you send it on a Monday and it takes them until, I don't know, let's say Wednesday, depending where you are. I mean, I'm, 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 you know, not far from downtown Los Angeles, half an hour drive, whatever, 30, 35 minutes. Uh, that's basically two days by regular snail mail. So by the time they get it on a Wednesday, they have 10 business days from that point. So basically two weeks to respond. Failure to respond years. automatically rescinds anything because they, they know, they don't know, you know that, but they take all their time because they figure you don't know the, the laws, but I do. And so you could say that that was one of the reasons, but ultimately it's because what I didn't get to tell you, I wanted you to see the letter, is I approached the IRS or Internal Revenue Service on my own shortly after I wrote that letter with other empowered information we don't have time to get into today and said the same thing. And they sent it all around the country to different Internal Revenue Service offices to circle back to California to say, hey, basically, we're, you're, this matter is closed. There's nothing more that needs to be done. That's as close as you're going to get to them conceding and saying, Admitting, yeah, that's you amazing. Agree. Good for you, mate. That must be, that must feel good. Beating the system. I know how, well, I've done a few of them, but that's impressive that you've actually got it in writing. Well done. I hope that empowers somebody else. Well, that's continue. why I showed it is it isn't to boast about me. It's to give the audience a sense of encouragement that this thing has actually changed. It's not hearsay. It's not, speculation it's actualization and i wanted people to see the overarching thing is they switched from the federal reserve to the treasury and it's not even on the seal anymore and so what that means go ahead it'd be interesting to see one of the old letters wouldn't it to see what it had on the on the top of the letter from an original one a couple of years ago i'm sure somebody's got one out there um well what i remember was is it used to say uh used to say irs and it was federal reserve and the Federal Reserve was at top. It wasn't the Treasury. Yeah. Well, that's great. I'm very happy for you. Look, it's like, it's as though you had, listen. Well, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry, what? Can you hear this? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Do you hear the sum? No. It's the, <laughs> it's the music from Harry Potter. It's like you had a magic wand and you made the problem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you couldn't hear it on the mic. I'm um, sorry, I couldn't hear it. But thank no, don't you. Don't worry, it's just me being goofy. Um, that's great. Uh, that's very encouraging. Also, it gives it credibility that what you've been talking about for the last four odd years, saying, listen, things are changing. The IRS has been dissolved. They can't collect taxes. It's totally legal. There's nothing in the Constitution where you have to pay tax for the sweat on your brow. All exactly. these laws that they passed, which is trickery because they just bully you into it. My strategy in my life, John, is I just ignore everything. I don't give them a contract. They say, you got to fire this, you got to fire that. I don't find anything. They don't know anything about me. In fact, I've actually had to um, register a Spanish company recently for a real estate project I'm doing. And when I went into the equivalent of the, um, the, the Spanish IRS, when they checked up on my social security number, he said, we have zero on you. We don't have your name in the system, your social security number. We have nothing. You're a total an absolute ghost. Now, I've been in this country close to 30 years. Wow. So it just goes to show you, if you just ignore all these official demands and mandates, and you've got to do this, I didn't do any of it. I just, I ain't doing it. So, buddy, that's great. Where you want to go next? Absolutely. And again, I didn't know that what you knew four or five years ago, what I know now. I had to learn a lot in a very truncated period of time. I just wanted people to be encouraged that this is really happening and the Bible even says it's illegal to tax the man by a sweat of his brow. So what you're saying is accurate. It's biblical. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's go to what we usually do in talking about the different countries that everybody wants to know about Iraq, Vietnam, so on and so forth. 
So let's start with Iraq. Um, some, some great news there. Prime Minister Sudani has done everything that he needs to do. I, I know I said this before, but there's some updates to it. He's he set up all the laws in place. Everything is baked under the hydrocarbon gas law, right? So all the other important laws, the port of FA, the taxes and tariffs at the border, the reconstruction, the banking, all that stuff is tucked in a subfile underneath the oil and gas law. So yeah. if he were to try to do any more, he would be assassinated. Um, Maliki, the scumbag Obama holdover, we all know about and love so much. He's in his last days. He's desperate because what we're hearing from our team is that they're watching to see by the end of this month that the currency auctions end because that will officially cut off any last um, money laundering deep dollarization for Maliki and his goons to live on, right? And yeah. so by proxy, uh, no pun intended with the Iranian proxies, that starves off his, his uh, gravy train. And he knows that. So he's panicking. So what he's trying to do is do early elections to get rid of uh, uh, Sudani. Now, remember I said that the countries copy each other, Iraq and the U.S.? Yeah, mirroring. Yeah, yeah. mirroring. What if we have early elections? Well, would it make any difference? I mean, that's a, another whole question that we can get into later. Um, I mean, first of all, we've got to get Trump's charges thrown out so he can actually stand. I've got mixed feelings. I've mixed feelings about the election, but let's we'll get into that a little bit later, John. We, we, you know what happens with us? Yeah, yeah. There's things we keep veering off target. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, 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 I agree. I'm trying to stay on task, but these things, everything intersects. That's the thing. It overlaps so much. Nothing is nothing is separate from anything else when you realize. But to your point, so uh, Sudani has done everything he can do, you know, short of being assassinated. So he and Maliki are going to have a standoff. Now, what we understand is that Sudani is making friends with the Israeli military, and he made a private call and told them, get ready to attack the secret nuclear power plants of Iran. Last week, they were in position at the border, as we understand it, of, um, uh, what is it, uh, Lebanon. They were right on the Lebanon border, and if you intersect past that, which you know better than I, being overseas, you dovetail into Iraq and Iran territory, right? So yeah, there, we of- think they're... Yeah, we think they're going to use drones because that's what they did in April to test the vulnerability points of the defense system of Iran. Yeah. The other consideration, David, that might happen is the U.S. did a deep state fake attack and they blamed um, they, they, when they took out ISIS, they, they gave a credit to another country. I think they gave it to Iraq, as a matter of fact, to get the credit for it, but it was actually the U.S. deep state militias. They could choose to do that again and do it themselves and give Israel the credit to be the scapegoat so nobody sees like a a cloak and dagger movement, for lack of a better term. One of those things is going to happen, right? So we're watching very closely for that. Meanwhile, a nice segue to what you're going to ask me is Vietnam. Now, you have seen this week major motion of activity with Putin. Yeah. He and meeting with meeting with um, Kim Jong Un. They did the car ride. They're laughing together. I kind of think they were trolling some of our American actors and stuff. When you see, you think that I was looking at those. But hang on, we'll just go back. Putin sure, flew. Sure, sure. Putin flew to Vietnam, and they've agreed a cross-border trade deal in local currency. Now, what does this mean? Um, it means that they can now accept. The Vietnamese dong, and they can then transfer that Vietnamese dong into their new digital coin that's coming. Yeah, the whole st- that's it. The whole story. And finish it off then, John, if you got it in front of you, because I might mess something up on my memory. Yeah, I was just backing you up on that. So <clears throat> big alert came out. I sent you this morning. Again, uh, one of our team members, Joe, came credit for the fine on this. Alert. The trade agreement between Russia and Vietnam means Russia takes Vietnamese dong in trade. Yeah. Now, Russia holds dong in their currency reserves. Russia converts the dong into rubles, then converts the rubles into the unit. Russia makes trade investments in Vietnam using the unit, which is backed by gold. The unit being backed by gold now replaces the U.S. dollar now that the Saudis have dropped it as of June 9th, which we confirmed with you a while back, Yeah, as foreign uh, central bank currency reserves in Vietnam. This is called the internationalization of the unit backed by, you're going to love this, 40% in physical gold, 30% in Russian bonds, 
and 30% in Chinese bonds, where both Russia and China currencies are backed by gold. So this now means that this extenuation of Saudi Arabia cutting off the petrodollar, now Putin is putting Vietnam into position. Remember I told you China and Russia both hold a lot of dong and yeah, they have a yeah. interest in powering up their military. The dong and the dinar will help them do that. We had a conversation early this month with Jim Willie. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's a yeah, brilliant yeah. financial statistician. We have him on again next month to continue this discussion. He said in no uncertain terms on our show, people who watch will, will see this, that he believes the dong is going to go first. And I said, why? He said, because China's running the show. It appears he was right. So what's encouraging to me, David, is that the Vietnamese dong is about to go. But guess what that means? That means momentum for the Chinese bonds. That means momentum for the next thing you're going to ask me, Zimbabwe, right? Yeah. Because yeah. It starts to create a domino effect. But the fact that you're seeing all this stuff happen, you're seeing Venezuela. I know everybody wants to know about the boulevard. Venezuela is about to enter the BRICS. This is my personal opinion. I may be wrong, but of course the boulevard is going to go. But I believe that's going to be next year. And this is why. I think they'll join the BRICS this year. In October, you may be, you may already know this, David. I'm speaking to the constituents of the audience. In October, the BRICS has a huge summit. They have 100 countries going there, of which that represents over, I believe it's 60% of the world's population, give or take. Don't yeah. hold me. Yeah, it's more than that. It, it's it just, may, I'm being conservative. Yeah, could be yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's under Let's 50% of the world's countries. Uh, I think yeah. there's 220 countries. So it's on the, just on the 50%. 209. 209 provinces, yeah. yeah. Um, but it represents, it's about 62, 65% of the population of those countries because you got countries like India, vast population. Exactly. Right. We have China and India, which arguably represents what's China got? 1.5 to 2 billion people, something like that, right? I don't remember. It's a lot. Oh. Last I checked, it was 1.5 to 2 billion. And then the India, I think, has close to either a, million, a billion or somewhere between a billion and 1.5 billion. So you're talking half the world, roughly, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Not, so all those know, countries, where's the summit going on again? I think it's in Moscow, if I remember right. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. So Venezuela, it's in their interest to come in because they've already done, just to refresh people's memory, they've already done a couple of deals with other BRIC companies, uh, countries such as refine what happened which country was it again they took on one of their largest oil refineries which they've been deliberately um held back from finishing or updating because it wasn't in operation so if i remember rightly china put the money in and they're getting that oil refinery back up and running to get at the excess um well the, all the oil and the oil fields so they can then export it so yes. that's very interesting and it also goes back to this thing that you said on June the 9th, Saudi says we're not going to renew this signature. But people don't really realize how important it is because all the international oil deals around the globe were always settled in U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. So you imagine how many trillions of dollars are traded every single year with these huge tankers that they ship hundreds of millions of gallons of oil. And they, all right. of these deals are brokered and processed all through the Federal Reserve and U.S. dollars. Now, them pulling out of that is going to cost the cabal a shit ton of money. Man. I mean, I don't even know how many zeros. Oh, yeah. And what's interesting now, John, is because Saudi have done that, mainstream media have been dragging up 9-11 saying that Saudi Arabia assisted and helped the terrorists bring down the Twin Towers. Well, we all know what the truth is behind the Twin Towers. Yeah. Saudi Arabia wasn't them. It's like the same thing on the Lockerbie flight. That wasn't one particular person from Libya. We all know who it was. Um, and people aren't as stupid as they used to be anymore. So mainstream media trying to make Saudi Arabia the bad guy just because they didn't want to play with the American petrodollar anymore. And right. it's their liberty. They can say we don't want to do it. Nothing to do with it, you know. They're just throwing the toys out of the pram and trying to bring negative news while news press about them. So people are going to turn on the Saudis, but it won't work. No. People... So anyway, carry on. No, Please. I thank you for adding. Sorry, what's that? You, you were leading it into the Chinese well, bond. Well, yeah, no, I was going to say Zimbabwe. But before I do that, let me just answer people because I know everybody wants to know about the usual players like, like Venezuela. So Venezuela is joining the BRICS. So is Pakistan. 
I was just reading as you were talking, I'm listening to the news is coming out so much. I'm trying to give you guys the, the freshest stuff I get. Uh, Xi and Putin score wins as more Asia leaders aim to join BRICS. No big surprise there. So yeah. they're building it up the narrative. They've already done it. So Putin is playing the bad guy that Trump was playing in his first first term. Now Putin's going to take it over, then Xi. So that's always been part of the plan. They're carrying it forward while Trump is coming behind the scenes, back out of the commander in chief position to president of the republic, not the corporation. That's why I led with those documents to kind of set the stage for what we're talking about now. So yeah. Zimbabwe is waiting in the wings. Um, I want to be very clear about this because one of my audience members did not hear what I said and misconstrued it and said, oh, we're waiting until August for the reset. First of all, I don't do dates and rates. So I never said that. What I was saying then, and I'm saying now the same thing. The elections for Zimbabwe are August 23rd as it stands now. They could change, but as of right now, it's what it is. Starlink satellites have been set up for July ahead of the elections. Why? Same thing as here. Catch the, catch the fraud, catch the cheating, right? Yeah. Uh, Chimisa, Nelson Chimisa, Christian, has said, as you know, adamantly, first order of business when I'm back, restore the sovereignty of my people, remove the corruption, and, and re reinstate the bonds. And the agro checks, yes, I know what you people are going to ask. I know. Yes, everything. The dollars, the bonds, the agro checks, the whole lot. It'll get tucked into the zig. That's why they set the narrative for the zig. Everything will be under that, right? So we believe that's probably going to be somewhere between, could be the end of August, could be September, but it's a domino effect. And, and we're really watching this summer to see what happens with, you know, Vietnam or um, Iraq, which going back to that, let's tidy that up a little bit, David. So we're waiting for Putin to drop the final optical bomb on Ukraine, because we all know, and you, you yeah. this is a perfect thing for you to talk about. You wouldn't go into... Correct me if I'm wrong. You wouldn't go into Donbass and Lugansk to build up those areas infrastructure-wise and food if you were in the middle of a war zone. Is that right? Exactly. Because he's been building these amazingly well-designed, prefabricated apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. not just a one-level box where you can stick a couple of families in. He's gone in there and built whole, whole buildings. He's put the infrastructure back in. He's got the electricity back on. They've got the sewerage up and running. So he's been spending... A lot of money rehousing people that have uh, been affected by the, the the war there, and these are Russians. These are not Ukrainians. This was always right. a Russian zone. They speak Russian. They don't speak Ukrainian. So yeah, he's not about to rehouse all these people and say sorry, big joke. Now we, you know, <laughs> no, he's looking after his own people, and that's what I like about. I mean, it was no big surprise. That he won the election again, you know, the years they won election again. You know, there's nobody <laughs> coming anywhere near him. But those pictures of him with Kim Jong Un, um, I was questioning out whether they're real or not. You know, because it's just such an incredible picture of them all driving in. Whose car was it? Was it? It was Kim's, wasn't it? Some great big Rolls Royce or something. So, yeah, yeah. But it was quite funny, and I was looking at the pictures. I was like, "Is that Putin? It really because it was kind of a strange angle." I suppose you're always used to seeing him photograph straight on or just slightly off, but that profile picture. Yeah, it was a it was a strange picture, but they if the those pictures are real, it certainly looks like they're all getting on very well. Well, even if they're not, I mean, they could be using CGI or they could be real. It's hard to know, but I I don't think that's the original Putin anyway because this guy has a totally different demeanor. But they're getting the job done. They still have to have an optic for the normies that don't know. And going yeah. back to Venezuela, I said I was going to finish that. So let me just mop that up. So, yes, Venezuela will join the BRICS this year, along with Pakistan and many other countries. Right. But the reason I believe that they won't revalue this year and probably early next year is because if you remember, and a lot of people have a short term memory, President Trump at his State of the Union address in February of 2019 said about Venezuela, they were the fourth largest country in the world. Everybody thinks of them as oil reserves, but you and I know that they have much more. They have gold, they have silver, tons of assets in the ground beyond imagination. All these countries, don't even El Salvador with the great job Bukele's doing. That's one I'm going to be getting as well. because He's kicking butt. I mean, he's got a 92% approval rating. They've got, I think, nuclear fission in that ground in, in El Salvador. They haven't even mined yet because they weren't, they weren't, uh, decorrupted and, and in a war zone free enough to get to do that, they'll be able to do that now. So what President Trump said is he's going to help Juan Guaido become president over there and help nationalize 
Venezuela to come back to prominence. So I believe joining the BRICS was the first step, but then they need to get rid of Maduro, who's bad news. Then they can clean that up just like everywhere else in the swamp Trump is dealing with, and you'll start to see them thrive. People don't need to panic, David, because they should be encouraged because once this proverbial dam goes, it'll just go for a while. You can't do, all, I don't care what people say, you can't do all these countries at once. There's too many, there's, you'll log jam the system, right? Even with a QFS system, there's a process. You, you gotta do things in stages. More importantly, we believe that God is going to allow his people to all flourish. So many people in this community know about the dinar. They know about the dong. They know about the zim. They know about the boulevard. They know about the Indonesia rupia, which is, we believe is also going to go along with the dong and everything else. But remember, we're only part of about 1% of the population, right? 99% of people have no idea this is even going on. They don't even know what you're talking about. So God is gracious and merciful, and he recognizes that his people wake up at different intervallic points. So therefore, he's going to give his people as many chances to get into the wealth transfer, which will be a protracted period of time. Now, I want to be careful that people hear what I'm saying. The wealth transfer starts, or the second round of the wealth transfer, specifically as it relates to currencies and bonds, starts this year. It will continue because of what I just said. I am being careful and measured in my words so people hear it into 2027 because it takes time to roll out all these currencies because like you said there's 209 of them in provinces that have to get established that have to get the proper leadership that doesn't happen overnight that's good news because that means you have time to buy one currency move into another into another you can you can go into this wealth transfer as deep as you like or if you're happy with just a couple of currencies or the one that god told you that's fine but it it gives variety in time for everybody uh, to be a part of it. Yeah, I like that because it makes sense, Sean. One of the, the things I've always thought about is when the um, when the system does flip and all these people all of a sudden get um, get funding, there's going to be a period of slight chaos, I would imagine. Or it depends on where it is. For example, if you just dump in a load of money into a country that's being run by a corrupt government and say, okay, we're now going to exchange your currency. You're all going to make money. All that would happen was all of that newfound wealth would just be circulated quickly from people doing silly things like buying Lambos and helicopters and large mansions. And ultimately, that all goes back to the government and they would just use it to continue their reign of um, choking on their people. So the political situation needs to be stabilized first. And we're seeing a lot of countries that are stabilizing. Argentina is an interesting one. Their economy... And their mm -hmm. currency is nuts, the inflation. That's another one that would be on my list, John, the Argentinian. Um, Absolutely. Similarly, because my son lived there. He's lived there this year for about four months. And it's his favorite country. He travels around a lot. And he said when he what he used to do is he used to go into like a, an internet cafe, which would be a semi-legal currency exchange. And what he'd do is he'd transfer crypto under their account. They'd see it in there. And then they'd pay him. But mm -hmm. if he was to put his bank card in an ATM, he would get exactly 90% less than the same amount of money he exchanged in these little internet cafes, these small little bureau de charges, because right. the government was just caning it on expenses and um, costs for processing the foreign currency because they don't have it. They don't have the foreign currency, which we can see now is changing because... The president of Argentina has been doing a lot of traveling. He was in Italy recently, gets on very well with the Italian. He's been doing the tours. He's been doing the rounds. He's been talking openly about how socialism doesn't work. Communism doesn't work. Um, you've got to give the people the, the rights to work hard so they can earn this money. But the problem is a lot of people in a lot of countries, John, they go out and work and they tax them 7, 65, 70%. Norway, extremely high taxes. Denmark, ridiculous. Belgium, Holland, Germany. A friend of mine pays 65% tax. I said, you're off, you're rocker. Why would you do that? Oh, you know, I don't want to make problems. So one of the reasons I believe that you're right on that is rolling all of this newfound wealth back into the people that was stolen from. A lot of these countries are A, going to have to have the political situation balanced, and the right people in place. We've been talking about the elections in Zimbabwe. We've been talking about the elections coming up 
um, in Iraq. And once they've got the president in place that knows how to do it and what he wants for the people, these are the key moments that I see that things are going to roll out in the different countries. And they're not all going to happen at once, like you say. Interesting, isn't it? Very. And there's one other country I want to add, David, to the list that you you were absolutely right about them. And there were actually two, the Lebanese pound. Because remember, mm -hmm. they just devalued 90%. Where do you think they're headed? Back yeah. up. You do a devalue or revalue. Look at it, as I said before, for redundancy's sake. I don't care where you live. You flip a house, right? You take the worst house on the best block. You take it to the studs, build it all the way back up on a solid foundation, and then you know make it pretty and put it back out there. Devalue to revalue. Uh, Thailand is another one that people should be watching. The Thai bot. Thai Again, I had, I had a lunch with a Thai business person earlier this year, and she does works in the textiles, as I said to you in the last show. And she's very adamant when I, I kind of test her a little bit. I said, I heard the Thai bot is going to make a resurgence next year. Yeah, next year, she goes, we're looking forward to that. We're going to finally get a revalue. She was very like direct about it, like as if we were ordering food. It was no big deal, it was, you know. And so, you know, the, the Thai people, you've been there. So, you know, yeah. they have resources. Yes, they have corruption and pedophilia and a lot of satanic things going on there. But that country, like many others, can get cleaned up very quickly. So, and also, you know, David, I, I would just like to note on a separate note, um, I do a weekly wrap-up show every week where I talk about uh, deaths and resignations and you're seeing a lot of this stuff. I don't think that's uh, mutually exclusive, right? I think that that's symbolic of a changing of the guard. We're seeing a change of the guard. Guard of leadership. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of these these people that um, that are slowly fading away. Look, what's the, what was the name of the senator that was just kept freezing? Recently? Oh, McConnell. Yeah, Mitch McConnell. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just to show the public. I mean, he he could have done that at any occasion, but he just had three of those, four of these occasions, right on camera. And again, it's to show the public. Well, he's gone. He can't work. This is just like leaving a business card. I'm going to show you that I'm totally mm. incompetent and shouldn't be in power. They take him out. He's gone. Um, I mean, Biden's been using that same power card since he got in there, just the senile bit. And is there a flight of stairs that he can actually walk up without falling down them? They should just have him walk downstairs because he'd just get down there in a flash. People would think he's athletic. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Joe, Joe who? I, I don't think that's the real. Yeah. Yeah. I think we know better. Same with but, Zelensky, right? You see the pictures where they had two Zelensky's a while back. They had one at the bottom of the steps and one at the top. Yeah. It doesn't uh, surprise me. They do this all the time. I mean, I don't believe a lot of them are around, John, because we know that this, the, the cabal talks about how they bring them in. Okay. So you're an up and coming pop star or, or sports star. All right. We're going to offer you a deal for 50 million. You got to talk about our brand. Let's just call it Cocoa Pops, okay? All you can talk about is Cocoa Pops. But if somebody says, do you like rainbow flags? You say yes. What do you think about Trump? Oh, he's evil. This is it. This is how they buy all these, these celebrities and pop stars and sports stars. Yep. But where are they all? Just before Trump got elected the first time, they're all coming out saying, if Trump gets elected, I'm leaving America. Oh, yeah? What, did you leave America, Madonna? None no. of them did. Where are they all? So I do think that a lot of these political players that we say are still floating around, like Hillary Clinton's another one, I don't actually believe they are. I think this is already being played out, already done. And the only reason that we're going through all of this is at the start of this whole plan, they sat around and said, right, what are we going to do to shake the hell out of the entire planet to make them wake up to what's been going on? So, okay, what about we make a fake pandemic up and keep everybody locked up, make them paranoid about a disease and an infection that has no symptoms, and mm -hmm. you have to wear a mask where it says on the, box, on the box, does not protect you. So why are you making me wear it? The whole rainbow movement, it's ridiculous. The children's books that being handed out to five-year-olds to touch themselves, all of this <clears throat> is designed to wake us up, to shock us, to see how much more we can take. And I think the last thing they're going to do, John, because we've seen this already, I could go and give you another 20 or 30. I think the last thing they're going to do is they're going to start playing with our money. That's it. They're going to, we already know that the Federal Reserve is done. They've been wrapped up more or less. They're not allowed to print any more money. They can't print any more money. The Saudi, the Saudi has canceled or not renewed the contract to trade in petrodollars. So at the end of the day, 
all of these places that people think there's going to be a tax haven they're sticking all the US um, dollars. I don't think it's a safe place at all. Doing anything in US dollars is too volatile for me. I don't want them. I don't have any. And you want to be silver, gold. But mm -hmm. then again, who can okay. afford to buy, you know, a whole bar of gold? What would that be? About $64,000 for one bar. I mean, gold is an expensive item. This is where these currencies come in. Because mm -hmm. some of these countries that we're talking about, they're not going to be under the same pressure. Pressure. These are BRICS economies, where when things do get revived, their entire, like Thailand, like Vietnam. Vietnam have just signed that deal with Russia, who's best friends with China, and other buddies are Indian. You know, the Americans have not done that deal because the entire world is sick of how America have been taking all the cheese off the top of, of the cake all the cream cheese off the top of the cake and keeping it for themselves and giving the scraps away to the rest of the world. Wouldn't let Libya form their own currency chain with the, the Libyan golden dinar. They've been trying their best, John, but it, it's all falling apart. Absolutely. Now, one other country I think is interesting, I'm getting some good intel about this, you'll be surprised, is Syria. Mm -hmm. so, a friend of mine is there now. Her mother's Syrian. They're an American couple. They live in Florida. Her mother died and left her a house in Syria. So she speaks Arabic. She's been back many times. She's in a probably in her sixties now, but the American husband is extremely patriotic. I don't like to go to those Arabic countries. He said he's absolutely fallen in love with Syria. He says it's a nightmare to get in there. They try to keep people out, but when you get in there, the property prices are ridiculous. Thirty thousand, forty thousand dollar buys you a nice apartment in the center of Damascus, which is the oldest city on the planet beautiful place for a dollar 50 you can eat like a king the food price the food is very fresh it's cooked in front of you but the people are living in this constant terror is that isis going to pop back up again who's been funding isis we all know it's the cia where they're getting money from illicit drug deals illicit banking all this fiat currency the old swift system and now they've been all of this is taken away there's going to be lots of opportunities in syria but the currency is worth very little now. So grab yourself some Syrian, I don't even know what it's called, Syrian dinar, I presume. So use your common sense. If you don't, if you've already got the dong, I've got dong. If you've, you've got dong. I've yep. got some Ibarth. I've got some Zims. What else have I got? I've got some dinar. We all have these. But you can always open up your diversity file by going with countries like Syria. Where are you going to get Syrian money from? Well, well, there's going to be a link below. We'll give it to you. I don't know if he if he does it, but um, these these countries for a hundred bucks out there, you can that's a that's a month's rent, hundred dollars on a very nice place. So if you put five hundred dollars into one of these countries, the same with Zimbabwe, you know, with those those are slightly different because of the bonds. But get some dong, get some get some bart, get some Venezuelan boulevard. All these countries once they stabilize are going to be amazing places. And I'll tell you that the the, uh, the template that's been put together because people say, oh man, I'm not going to go down to, I'm not going to go down to Venezuela. It's so violent there. And oh my God, I'd last 10 minutes before I get murdered. Not if they clean it all up like what they've done in Salvador where they put hundreds of thousands of gang members inside prisons. And the, mm -hmm. the security of the country is now in the top in South America. It's the safest country in South America. I've been there. It was a nightmare. We used to have to get bodyguards going anywhere. Not so much me, but only because I was sort of... No, it's because I was sometimes kind of blended in. But, you know, if you get off the flight and you're looking white and you're dressed in an outfit from the Gap, they're going to know you're a tourist. But now he's cleaned mm -hmm. up all the, the drug and guns and, and gang activity. Another great country. Get yourself some of that currency. You know, there's, there's lots out there that you could jump into and just have a little tickle, as they would say in English. Fifty dollars, a hundred bucks. Just hold on to it. See what happens. Absolutely, David. And if I could just add one more thing to your very cogent points that you made. Um, also, I would be once they come off sanctions, because we know this is a bait and switch. And I want to, I want to bring a very important point to you and the audience to tie this in. I'll be watching for the Iraq, excuse me, the Iranian. Uh, I believe they call it the Real Out of Country and Toman in their country. Two different names. They've been on a sanctions list from the U.S. OFAC, Office of Foreign Assets Control, for quite a while. Right. But that's oh. going to come That's going to come off. 
And that will be a very good investment when the time comes. And I, I want people to hear this because this is extremely important with the dinar. And I'm saying this to you as well, David. What's, what we see happening is this will be a godly RV, not a corrupt RV. You don't want a corrupt RV because it would be like 25 cents. It wouldn't be backed on anything and it would crash. Obviously, with all the countries in the world heavily invested in it, not just the U.S., no one's going to let that happen. But again, we've got to make it look scary to try to detract people from you know investing in it. If that's what their whole gig is, right? And that's what we come yeah. in to break up their agenda, the demonic agenda. What we see happening, David, is once whether it's whether it's um, whether it's the U.S. sanction, excuse me, U.S. deep state militias, or it's Israel itself directly that breaks up the U.S. militias and the corrupt Iranian practices we've talked about many times. Iraq will be freed up, like Kim Clement said, when things seem at their worst, I will free my people, says the Lord. Here's the key: a lot of banks won't recognize the dinar in, in the onset for maybe one to three weeks. Yeah. Wait your turn. Do not panic. Do not make stupid decisions like there's going to be these con artists that come out and say, oh, hey, you know, come to this hotel. The banks won't take your currency. We'll do it for you. Then we'll give you a contract rate. There is no contract rate. I'm sorry to put a wet blanket on all these gurus. There's no contract rate. Listen, the rate is going to be so good, you won't even need it because What's happening is the Ministry of Planning is the one that dictates the real rate. Okay, the on the, on the forex is not the real rate. That's a program corrupt rate, like the dollar as perceived value. It's worth crap. Yeah. It's only valuable if people perceive it valuable and play the game. Right? Bear with me a second. So the same thing applies to Iraq. The 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 forex rate would be like the Federal Reserve. It's a lie. People think that's the rate because they don't know about the Ministry of Planning, like we're educating people right now. The Ministry of Planning, the more we hear from them, we're starting to hear from them, they dictate the rate in the private sector. Once it goes private, then it goes public. It comes out at a certain rate. To, you've got to account for the rate of inflation, right? Then it goes on the digital asset back platform, the QFS, backed by assets. Tether, so I want to tell you, a couple of days ago, Tether is now a stable coin backed by gold. It's one of the first ones to do it. It's setting the place for XRP and everything else to be a part of the new ISO 20, 2000, ISO 20022 backbone platform. Very, very important, right? Yeah. I amazing. just showed you an article a minutes ago. We talked about what's going on with Vietnam. Russia has agreed to take the dong and trade like uh, like China's going to allow, uh, excuse me, Saudi Arabia is going to allow the RMB and the Petro Yuan, which goes back to Jim Willie's point that China's running the show, not the U.S. as part of BRICS. You see, yeah. So we're building this sucker layer by layer, but it's a really, really good place to be where we are. So people do not panic, do not try to like sell off your dinars don't go to some backdoor deal Psst, buddy all that kind of stuff no just be, <laughs> be, be patient and wait your turn you waited this long you could wait a couple more weeks for it to go public you'll be glad you did slow and steady wins the race so we still got our money on uh vietnam going first we're getting that what's his name is it um willie that was saying jim, he, jim willie is saying that yeah you still got a feeling Vietnam's going to go first. Well, that would be that would be a, a, an interesting start to the race, wouldn't it? Vietnam going first. I'd like it's, it to be. You know, the the, the very nice people. Mm -hmm. I could see how that country would would be interesting because honestly, I, the entire population is trained as um, small business operators. They're all hustling something, whether it's vegetables, fruit, fish. Hats, right. T-shirts, whatever. They're, they're, they're a very industrious nature, um, the Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. And friendly and nice. I don't know how the hell we ended Well, you ended up going to war with them because they just didn't look like they were bothered about anything. They just wanted to be left alone. And standing right in the middle of a communist center hold, which is Hanoi, mm -hmm. and communism there at all. It was just all capitalism. One guy buying, one guy selling, and other people negotiating to sort of interact. So it would be an interesting country to go for. Thailand would be another interesting one. But then again, look how the Middle Eastern um, attitude is. They're very hustling and hardworking people. 
going out milling in the land, getting the crops and fruits, bringing them to market, just selling one or two, three, four items. You know, they're very industrious. These people that are yeah. affected by uh, by previously being at war with America. Funny enough, I remember no. I remember no. going to the states on years ago, and every time you were you had a country that you invaded, and I'm not saying you personally. No, and I this know. is go the Yanks. I'd say I just no, I remember like Iraq was one. And then the next one is Afghanistan. I, I went away for a year, came back into America, and all of a sudden, every single taxi you got into in any city of America was all driven by an Afghan refugee. Like, yeah. what, you know, I thought you hated them, but now you just brought my load back in. It never <laughs> made sense. So anyway, um, yeah, that could be interesting in Vietnam going first. What else is on your list? Well, it's funny. It's funny, David, just to touch on that. You know, Jerry Seinfeld had this old joke because I used to live in New York City for about a decade before I got here to California and on my way out, thankfully. And um, he used to say, you know, you have to get into a uh, the, the prerequisite to getting into a New York City cab is getting somebody with a name with nine consonants. <laughs> so, Oh, you, you can't pronounce it. When I lived in Chicago, they banned they banned the local taxi drivers because they were constantly on their hands free. Mm. You'd get in, you'd say, okay, Michigan, Michigan, and I don't know, whatever, 50th or whatever. And he'd go, okay. And then he'd just go, Allah, <laughs> on the phone, he'd be looking back at you. And they got so paranoid about terrorist groups infiltrating America, posing as taxi drivers, that they said, right, no more conversations while driving taxis in Arabic. He's probably yeah. just saying, please. Please, please videotape Seinfeld from me tonight. I'm working late. But in the back of the taxi, it sounds like, yes, I've got another one for the terrorist attack. I'm bringing him to the container shipping area now. <laughs> I was <laughs> laughing because they did such a great propaganda job. And Iran's another typical case of this, you know. I asked the average American what they think of Iranians. Oh, my God, they're crazy. They're always trying to kill us. They're planning against us. But if you actually know any Iranian, if you've ever met them, the only mm-hmm. thing they're plotting is how they can feed you more than is humanly possible because you can't get up off the table unless you have to be wheeled out in a wheelchair. No, you must eat more. Come on, you're looking thin. Very Come on, awesome. my friend. <laughs> yeah. Everything's my friend, my friend. Hello, man. Yes, I need the answer. Yes, my friend. No, my friend. Yes, 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 yes. No. There's an old joke, David. What a what does a, a an Indian say when he's mad at you? No, 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 no. You're no longer my friend, my friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite good, actually. They like that. Yeah, that's all right. I could do better. What, but, what's what, on your list next? Where are we going to go next? List? Well, real quick, you know, when I was living in New York, just to touch on this real fast before we go on to the other stuff, because there's some big updates here. Um, I remember to your point, I, I got into a cab once. I was going to a Yankee game. And I was living on the east side uh, around 46. So that's kind of midtown Manhattan on the east side by the Grand Central. And I said to the guy, I go, oh, please, can you get me quick to Yankee Stadium? He goes, Yankee? And all of a sudden, he just takes off 100 miles an hour. That's all he needed to hear, apparently. And Yankee. He was, <laughs> it's all he knew, but he knew where he was going. So I was like, oh, God, please get me there in one piece. Um, uh, yeah. Why did they do that? Why did they just flat out with the car for me? It's, it's either hard on the brakes. Are hard on the gas in New York taxi drives, even up against the glass in the back as you get thrown forward, <laughs> thrown back in this. Yes, I'll have the whiplash special, please. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's they think they, if they get more fares, it's turnover like restaurants. The quicker they get you out, the more fares they can do, the more money they make. It's turnover, burning it in gas, though, aren't they? Oh, well, anyway. yeah, no. So, here's another thing, uh, David, that's significant Jeff Landry, who's the governor of Louisiana, first state in America to implement the Ten Commandments, be in all public schools, all the way to college, or you would say university level, in clear and legible print. Massive no move for, thank you, Jesus, massive move for America's faith and constitutional restoration. So that's a big, big deal. You know, all you need to do is follow the Ten Commandments and follow the words from Kenny Rogers, the gambler, and you can be a good human. <laughs> You know, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. You know, the Ten Commandments will keep you that way. The other ones will keep you on the on the right path away from booze. And, but that's right. great news. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Me too. Well, if we could just follow the first two, love God with all our heart and soul and don't put any idols before him and love one another as we love ourselves like our neighbor. I think we could just get that right. We could build on the rest of it, you know, but yeah, absolutely. 
Um, let's see. Let me just give me a second. Let me look at the news feed I've got here. Oh, there was a video. I don't know if you're on my telegram because I try to send you stuff periodically, as you know, because yeah. um, it's coming out so fast. There was a video we sent about a week and a half ago. Those on the telegram will know. Speaking of Saudi Arabia, their representatives on live television took a dollar bill and burnt it, symbolically showing the death of the dollar. So it doesn't get more clearer than that, does it? No, it really doesn't. Uh, let's see. Um, Czech Central Bank Governor Mishi wants to buy 60 tons of gold in gradual purchases. Uh, Zimbabwe eyes BRICS membership. We already talked about that. Ripple working with 10 governments globally. That continues to back up the fact that XRP is going to be gold backed and it will be part of the fundamental blockchain for the new digital technology, digital ledger technology, DLT, as people know it in the crypto world. That's what's going to move all these currencies in the banks at fractions of a second. Um, one of my family members sent me an email today, and I'm just throwing out random things to you, uh, that Wells Fargo, the bank we're with amongst, well, not, they're not great like anybody else, but they're, they're one of the flagships. We know this. Yeah. They're now opening up starting, I think, in July. They're opening up uh, back on Saturdays. Hmm. Why would they be doing that? Making it more convenient to go to do the exchange, perhaps? Yeah, because you people don't really need high street banking anymore. You nobody uses checks. Right. You know, this is the thing. When, when and here's why you need a high street bank. You'd go in there because you have cash to deposit from a business so you can keep your payroll going so you can pay your suppliers. People would pay you in checks. You didn't have internet access, so you couldn't transfer anything. Everybody has online banking now. Nobody accepts checks, and there's hardly any cash floating around. So why would you actually need a high street bank these days, John, especially one that's opening on a Saturday when you've got customer service, you've got everything online, you don't need to talk to anybody. And we know that Wells Fargo have been transfer transferring their banks into all offices, which looks like personal um, meeting rooms. So right. the rehabbing been going on there. They are getting ready to set up to be a wealth management bank. Right. And that's the difference. Where are all these wealthy people coming from that need managing? We well, you know. Exactly. I mean, you're seeing more and more commercials with J.P. Morgan Chase, about wealth management. I started seeing it during the, uh, what was it, the uh, Spanish, you guys just, and was it, oh, I'm sorry, the Rome Open, I think, and then they have the uh, oh. I mean, tennis, I'm speaking of tennis, but they had the uh, in May or something like that. You'd see more, uh, you know, J.P. Morgan wealth management, and you're going, in the worst economy in history, who's able to think about retiring? Us, yeah. you know, and we're going to be the light in the darkness to be able to help our families, the poor, the lonely, the needy, the hungry. I say that because there's invariably in these chats, there's always, well, I don't have anything and I don't have this and that. We have to get away from that mindset, a poverty mindset. And yes, we're all going through stuff uh, that's understood, but how we handle it and how we trust God through it is really the key to this whole thing, because this is his blessing. We need to steward it properly. We can't just I'm trying to get my audience. I'm not saying they're all in. I'm saying the ones that still have a lottery mentality. We're still asking about dates and rates because we will never entertain that for obvious reasons. You can't think of this as a lottery ticket. Ask the people who have won the lottery. Many of them that have lost it all would tell you, God, I wish I never became wealthy because I have more yeah. problems because they didn't change their mindset, right? So that's, that's really critical, David, in as much as the currencies is you have to ask yourself, David, an important question. That sounds rudimentary, but it's quite important. What's your wealth tolerance? What, how much can you handle, right? Because to one person, a million dollars is a lot of money. To somebody else, 10 million is. To someone else, 100 million, a billion, and so on. And so it's, it's you know, what you can manage and everybody's going to have to relearn how to be self-sufficient and responsible and not rely on the government. The beauty of these currencies, like you said, is it helps you become independent and self-sufficient and become your own central bank. Now, there's one other thing I'd want to, just say here, David, if I may, I have a lot of subject matter experts that come on my podcast, and we're very blessed to have them. You know, Andy Sheckman, Greg Manorino, Lynette Zhang, Jim Willie, they're all great. And they all have complimentary perspectives. But the one thing that they all are missing on, and I'm trying to help them see it, and I, I let them have their opinions. I don't ignore, I don't interrupt them. I don't try to, you know, contradict them. But the precious metals, yeah, they're God's money. Haggai 2.8, the gold and silver mine in the Old Testament. But 
Where there's a disconnect, David, is that the bonds, the currencies, the cryptos, right? And other things are all correlated in those metals. One begets the other. They're not mutually exclusive. A lot of them, I think, think that it's just precious metals and nothing else. I'm like, you haven't graduated your mindset yeah. to realize they all correlate. So at point of fact, when you're buying these currencies, you are actually buying metals because you're buying what assets are grown in country in the ground, which in many instances is gold and silver and copper and many other things. Yeah, the, 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 the expression in a crisis, it's important to keep your head when all around you are losing theirs. Mm. Because, like you say, these lottery winners, that this newfound wealth, they always make the same mistakes. And I think it goes down to what are your vices? You know, some people like drugs, some people like casinos, the womenizing, the booze. You know, what are your vices? So if you're, in, if you're at peace with God and yourself, he'll guide you in all of this. You won't fall into the trap of, you know, sitting in a jacuzzi with the 17 crates of champagne with a former Miss Americas from the last 15 years. You know, all these weird things that these lottery winners do. You know, keep your head about you when you do when you do become your own bank and you are wealthy. You need to think about what you're going to do and what the assets are. It's very tempting to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to go and buy Gulfstream and I'm going to go around the world and I'm going to fly it myself. And then, oh, let's just have a couple of drinks while I'm flying my Gulfstream. What's the worst that can happen? Mm. There is going to be a lot of mayhem associated with this, which ties us back into what we're saying about each country rolling over first. But you got to believe. I, I actually would find it very hard to believe because, like you say, this is all orchestrated by a higher power. Of one percent of the population knows about this, and we've been chosen as the representatives of this higher power to educate the people that are listening, that want to listen, because it's the only thing that makes sense. This this can't go on, you know. The the real estate market in the states, I think, is foundering because, um, because of all the the mortgages that haven't been paid because people can't afford it, you know. You're on the same salary as you were five years ago, maybe a little bit more, but the cost of living has gone up 32%. So people are under pressure and things are going to snap. You can't trust Wall Street. The, the, the Saudis are burning US dollars. We know from that paperwork that the uh, corporation has been um, implemented and, the, and that the bad one's been taken down. Trump's mm -hmm. paid off the national debt. Countries like the Czech Republic are asking to buy... Uh, 60 tons of gold to back up their assets. It's a very important country, the Czech Republic. You'd be surprised what they manufacture there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of electronic parts there. My friend has a, a factory there, and I know a lot more. And they're quite aggressive in the market, but they're quiet. They're very clever people, the Czechs. Um, so as things heat up, what are you going to trust? This is the thing, isn't it? What are you going to trust? You can't just, you know, you, do, do you, you want to keep cash in the house? I like cash personally, but I wouldn't be holding on to dollars. I'd be holding on to something else. And with all these currency we talk about, John, that's the thing. Okay, look, you got US dollars stuffed in the mattress. You can always grab some out and go down and spend them. But all of these other currencies, you know, you can still go and cash them back in and, and take US dollars because they are valuable. They mm -hmm. are, a, they are a, a registered living currency, apart from the Zim bombs, which we say every time. John, we've got a few minutes left. What else do you want to talk about? Then we've got another five minutes we'll give them. I mean, I've honestly, I've emptied the vault of the main things at this point. I mean, I just oh, uh, okay. we got through it all. I'm, oh, that's good. Yeah. I'm happy for that. Well, let's talk about the links below. What we normally do is we'll put the links below. If anything that you want to, that you've heard on the show tonight, you want to investigate a little bit more, just click on the links below. You'll be dealing with a very professional company that will get you what you're looking for. You can ping him an email, any questions, or you could send one to John. Make sure you ring him at three o'clock in the morning. You can text me and I'll give you his personal phone number. <laughs> ring, ring Chris. It's his company. He'll handle it. Ring Chris. No, they'll take care of it. Um, and give it some time, guys, because you know what? Where Depending on the currency where it gets shipped from, it can take up to about 10 days to get them. But more normally, they're, they're quicker than that, and it's all tracked. Right, John, take us into our closing part. What else would you like to just close down with? You want to talk about your channel, your address where people can find you, your Telegram channel? 
Sure, thank you. Um, always good to be with you, David, as always. It seems that the time goes so quickly, even though because yeah. we have so much to cover. Uh, yeah, I mean, they can find us on uh, my name on, uh, let's see, on Rumble and BitChute is under my name. Under the Telegram, it's a Club Patriot and my name. And then uh, the YouTube is Chris Rare World and my name. Chris is the business partner who manages all the marketing and operations. He, he heads up the currency, so I don't really touch that. That's his department. Uh, he also hand, heads up Club Patriot, which again is a, a very, uh, it, it's a membership based thing. So it's, it's free, uh, you know, like a discord chat where free people, community can come together and talk freely, like a Facebook DM or discord, what have you. And then there's a paid membership side where if you wanna get into getting access to uh, you know, people like, you know, myself or Nick Veniam, and you can do that. You can get one-on-one -on -one interaction. You'll be able to network with business owners. You know, if you've got um, a patent for something as part of a humanitarian project, and let's say one of the companies there, a CEO already has established further along and you want to, you know, create an alliance with them or a partnership, you can, there's different, you know, we're going to have ways to create different streams of multiple in, streams of income. Uh, it doesn't have to be network marketing, it could be other things. So, there's a whole sort of repository inside of Club Patriot that can be realized. So, but that's where the channels are where they can find us. Great. Well, if we're looking for any more um, answers to some questions, you can get all the links. We'll put all this below as well. John, it's been a pleasure as always talking to you, mate. I love no, your messages no. that come through. I don't always answer them, but I do always read them because I sure. usually like, I, I, you know, it takes me a few minutes to absorb some of the intelligence that I'm getting from you, but it's brilliant stuff. You're very devoted to the cause, and for that, it's an admirable trait. We'll be back again next month, folks, with another little chat. Oh, one other thing, John. I did Charlie's Golf Tournament, and a lot of people were asking after you. They were saying, hey, Mahoney, that chat that you had with John once a month, how cool is that? The Dutch footballer, Brian. Really? Yeah, Brian. <laughs> He's saying, I love the talks with you and John. If you're watching, Brian, I know you will be. Thanks for the chicken curry, mate. It was great. <laughs> Thanks, Brian, for the acknowledgement. We appreciate it. Yeah, there was a lot of people asking about you. They, they really enjoy these chats we've got. Your intel is great. We'll be back in a month with another one, usually three, four weeks like that. Let's see where we're both at on our schedules. And again, um, any information you need, just click the links below, and we'll see you very, very soon. God bless everybody. Take care.